it's Sammy here, welcome back to another video and I am at Universal Studios in Osaka right now. Yo, you're too too close to me. Oh. You're right. Two sorry. Meters, bro, two meters. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, good. Oh, okay. Let's start. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, Samuel here, welcome back. We are here at uh, my friend's apartment. This is David Choco Bean. Hi everyone. <laughs> is it Choco Bean? Choco Bean, yeah. yeah Choco Bean. Like and it, uh, chocolate and Mr. Bean. Yeah. And uh, he's a little nervous because he's not no, used I'm to not. be. No, you are nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, of course I am, yes. See how much uh, you're moving. Yeah, yeah. No, no, uh, <laughs> he's not used to be in front of the camera. <laughs> and we are both Germans and we don't really talk in English privately, so this is always an awkward situation. But it is, yes. For this channel, we will try our best. Um, yeah, I just want to introduce him to you guys. Um, this will be a little behind the scenes of Mr. Shokobin. He also has a nice book collection behind the camera, which I want to show you, or he, want, he will show me. Um, Want to see his, his his cameras, of course, and um, I actually want to talk about a few topics. For example, he is a big GR shooter, and I think we should talk about that as well. But I'm interested to talk about 28 millimeter, for example, because this is his prime primary uh, focal length, 28. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. This is also how we are connected because of the GR. Of the GR, yeah. and. Uh, Actually, a little backstory. So when I met him and I found out that he shoots with the GR, you were uh, shooting with the Fuji at that time. My name is David Shukubin, and I'm living in Düsseldorf. Yes, I was shooting with the Fuji, but I had used the GR1 before that, and then I was like, oh, nice, you shoot with the GR. And then when the GR3 came, and Fuji um, made me their GR3 ambassador, ambassador again. I really wanted them to also make David an ambassador or do something with David because in Germany I don't know so many GR mm. shooters or GR shooters that produce good work and since then you did a few ads, they used your photos, yeah, yeah. Um, but they have been a little bit quiet and uh, <laughs> I don't know why but uh, hopefully this will change. <laughs> no, but I really um, liked how your your pictures had like your style or your mm -hmm. you had a, diff a style that was unique to to your photos maybe a little inspired by Paul Buscato of course yeah yeah because you not only of him but Paul Buscato yeah, yeah so there are some sim similarities but still you have um, I really like your um, the series you also entered for a competition um, with the people being hidden behind mm -hmm. stuff or uh, what, what did you call yeah, it yeah hide and seek I think. Hide and seek, yeah. yeah. I will show some pictures <laughs> so they know what we are talking about. Yeah. But that that was a really cool series and and all shot on the GR, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What made you pick the GR? So this video is not about the GR, but I want no, to know yeah, what, of what made you pick the yeah, GR. Yeah, but uh, okay. Um, well, well um, like you said, Paul Buscato used to shoot with the GR, mm -hmm. and um, I was a huge fan, and I didn't uh, had a digital camera at that time. And um, of course, um, for my first digital camera, I didn't want to buy me directly a pricey Leica. Mm. And uh, actually, I bought uh, this GR2 second hand also from eBay. I think I bought it for 350 euro at that time. Have yeah. you shot 28 before that? Or was no. that also new then? That was new. Um, mm. I started with a 50 millimeter on a Minolta X700. Then I switched to a Canon F1 new with a 50 millimeter. Lens and um, and then I had a, like um, how do you say in English? Um, <laughs> what a <laughs> flute? Oh yeah, I really don't want you to think I'm showing off my great camera gear. It's not like this. No, but it's very. Uh, yeah, it's, I can see you care about all yeah, the cameras you use. I mean, look, in my room here, it uh, has a special place. Uh, yeah. In this. Because I really love photography, what can I say? And yeah. Let's start with the GR, because ah, okay. I like how yeah. the battle scars it has. Yeah, it uh, has a lot of scars. And of course, I have this dust problem as well. 
Yeah. Yeah, and this camera I really use also a lot. Uh, with this I really learned how to photo how to photograph. This is uh, the what? The Canon, Canon F1? F1 new edition. You can see it because of this part here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's a 50 millimeter, like I said. I started with 50 millimeters, and then I also got this lens, which is not a 20 to 75, but 20 to 35 millimeter lens. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the time, I use the 20 millimeter option. So I was um, on wide angle, and this mm, is really okay. a, a kind of extreme wide yeah. angle then, which is very nice because you can really get close to the people. Like I can be here, and you are totally still mm. in the frame, mm -hmm. and nobody knows. Okay, so what is this here? Is a video this camera? Is, yeah, this is just maybe uh, because it looks nice. <laughs> Never <laughs> used it before. Okay, okay. Also, this is like really just looking nice. I used the Hasselblad, of course, but I have to say nowadays I'm not using it uh, anymore. Ah, okay, and, and what is this here? And this is uh, a no name camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a Leica M7. Yeah. Can you take it out? Also very, so very nice. <laughs> so was this your main film camera? No, actually I would say the, most of the time before I got this, because yeah. this I got uh, way later, it was a uh, Canon. Okay. And then I got a Leica and of course I was like, oh man, now I got a Leica, I have to shoot a Leica. And actually one of the first images I shot with the Leica was also very nice. So you know it, when you get a new camera and uh, you're feeling yeah. like... Yeah, I know I have a Leica. <laughs> but, uh, so you're not using it anymore? Right now I'm not using it so much, no. So, but you but because it's film also. Yeah. It's a little bit complicated, Why my love with film, because I'm really and w getting tired of scanning. I have a nice yeah. scanner as well here. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's talk about 28 millimeters, because I thought about doing a video especially just to talk about 28 millimeter and what I like about it, and you like 28, so let's just try to find out what's so special about 28. So why let's do you- Let's try like to find it out. Yeah. <laughs> why do you like 28? Of course, the GR is a 28 millimeter lens, so I had no choice yeah. at that point, but uh, I really um, fell in love with the 28 millimeters because, um, I don't know, you get um, more into a frame and uh, it's not an extreme, Wide angle camera uh, lens. And yeah, and uh, 24 <coughs> feels much wider than 28. Course, yeah. and I think 24, 24 starts to feel like a wide angle, like yeah. a ultra wide, and then 28 is is right at that limit of being yeah. too distorted. And uh, especially if you have a camera without a viewfinder like the GR, you also have the length of your arm, your arm length, and. Right. If you, for example, shooting a 35 millimeter um, with a Leica, you have the camera like here, no? Mm. And I guess it's, of course, it, it's not the same. Uh, and I'm, I'm not a uh, professor, not a technician, technician or anything, but I guess uh, that you can compare a little bit, like having a camera without a viewfinder, which you use mm. by your arm and hand. Oh, and that. If you use a camera with a viewfinder and then a 35, I mean, okay, we can check. So of course I had to test it. Uh, on the left side you can see me using a 35mm lens, shooting from eye level. And on the right side I'm using a 28 But my arm is extended because I'm looking at the LCD screen. Here's how the 35mm shot looks like, taken with a viewfinder. And here's 28mm, but I'm using the LCD screen. Whoa! Of course there's less distortion on the 35mm shot, but the framing is very similar, which is very interesting. Study but that, that's a good point, that's what I like about the GR, that you can extend the, yeah, the exactly. range or you can yeah. go close without being close. Yeah. Um, and what I want to talk about, uh, what I find interesting is when people um, talk about 28, they always say you have to go get closer. And I actually think this is not true or you don't need to go. It depends on what you want to shoot. Yeah, every time it depends on the uh, yeah. photo you want to I, take. Yeah. I don't like pictures where it's all about just being close. Maybe if it's an interesting subject, then yeah. But um, uh, let me talk a little bit about my 
feelings about 28 because I only discovered this um, last year because of the pandemic and people are f mm. further away off from you. Um, I couldn't go close, right? So I discovered that 28 is... Um, what makes 28 special to me is that, uh, yeah, you get more in the frame, which can be difficult because there can be more distractions in the frame. But at the moment, as a photographer, I think, oh, I need to find an interesting subject and then lead the viewer's eye to the subject. So let me see uh, around the corners of the frame. And that's good. But at the end, you create um, a good image. But I think later, when people look at your photos, um, because it's so wide, the scene, uh, all the things that are not really part of the story become a, a different part of the story and still interesting, or more interesting, mm -hmm. I think, the more time passes. And to me, 28 feels like um, it's, not, it's not how the human eye sees, right? Human, <clears throat> humans see in 35 or 40. Um, but yeah, it feels like the human eye sees 35 and 40, but you still have that frame. Right? Yeah, and uh, but I mean, our eyes, a, I can see you from here, right? Yeah, of course. And it's a common lens for photojournalism as well. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, they say like 50, 35, or 28 as well. And yeah. uh, I don't know, you know, uh, like I think Paolo Pellegrin, a Magnum photographer, he uses 28. Yeah. Um, most, he, I like, think he had an exhibition in Hamburg. Ah, yeah. uh, he shoots Maybe. black and white yeah. uh, film also? I don't know. I but think both. I, I'm not sure really. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a common lens. And uh, Winogrand, a uh, street photographer, shot on 28 most of the time. Uh, yeah, interesting to talk about Winogrand because he was never so keen on getting the horizon yeah. leveled. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think 28, because it's our smartphones basically see in 28 uh, focal length that we attach 28 to a snapshot aesthetic, right? Mm. And I think that's that's fine, but... Um, uh, let Daniel me Arnold as well, 28. Oh yeah, Daniel <laughs> Arnold, yeah. And then it helps when shooting low and from the hip. Yeah. Um, it's easy to frame your shots that way. Uh, but let me go back to what I said, because I discovered last year that I, maybe I don't need to go close just to fill the frame. Um, maybe having a wider scene um, it's also interesting and having the subject uh, not so apparent. I actually bought a new camera, by the way. What? I don't, I don't know if you can tell by the by looking at this desk. Um, but uh, I decided not to talk about this channel. But this video will probably come out way later this year. So I, I guess I can mention it. Um, so first of all, uh, I like the GR so much because of the 28. And this is how I also came to love 28, similar to you. And um, in, when I was in Japan a few weeks ago, uh, I only shot on my digital M camera, like M, and a 28 lens. Must be nice, huh? Must be nice, <laughs> yeah. And it was nice, and this made me realize that, yeah, I'm a 28 guy, um, I don't need the other lenses I have. And then, uh, I don't want to justify my purchase decisions, but... I decided to sell my digital M, so I don't have the 262 anymore. I also don't have all my film equipment anymore. I sold my Minolta CLE. Uh, that was very hard. But uh, I need to, you know, we need to buy a car. My wife and I need to buy, you know, things for our baby and stuff. So I decided, you know, let's minimize the equipment to only the best camera I can get for <laughs> my needs. Come and on, you're bathing in bathing huh? money. <laughs> I'm bathing in money. No. <laughs> so, uh, but that ties into the 28 millimeter um, story or discussion. So here it is, my new baby. <laughs> and yeah, I traded in my M262 for the uh, Q2, um, and I didn't buy it new. This is I bought it second hand for like 3500, uh, and I. Also got 30 months of warranty, uh, which is yeah, crazy. Really nice, yeah. Yeah, and now this is 28, and this is also 47 megapixels. It's crazy, and I don't really need that much. But now, because I'm thinking more in like wide scenes, um, this actually makes total sense to me now. And 
Um, yeah, cropping is not a problem. It's yeah, but I don't want a crop. No, I, no. I think 28 is, if I want to document like my life and everything yeah. and want to remember all of it, how it felt, I think 28 is perfect. Yeah. I, because it feels like you're in the scene, you see so much of the surroundings, like that's why I don't like 50, because you, it's always like single is, subject. Yeah, it's very close. Yeah. yeah, and then you don't know, oh, there's a nice old man with a nice hat. <laughs> And then, okay, but where is he? What city is this? Or you don't get so much information. Uh -huh. I feel like I... Well, I, I was surprised when you came up here with the Leica Q2 because, you know, I already mm. told you that I also yeah, had a Q2 uh, like now two years ago. I bought it yeah. when it recently came out. Before the GR3, the, right? Yes, yeah. The GR3, um, I only got to shoot... When we went out with the Soul of Street guys yeah, in, Cologne, yeah. in Cologne, you bought the Q2, and then you end up selling it. Yes, and yeah. keeping the GR. Well, right? first of all, I also felt uh, not very good uh, spending so much money on a mm. camera. But Although, I mean, come on, uh, how much did you pay? I the paid full price? no less because it was basically also second hand. Mm. Although it really recently came out, so I was a little bit lucky, but. Um, Yeah, I mean, you, you know how it feels like to yeah. spend so much money on a camera. On the other hand, it's uh, one of the best hobbies that uh, really is giving something to our lives, I guess, you know, photography in general. And so... But there's another reason why you didn't like it for your shooting style, right? Well, I, I would take it. To, to <laughs> But then leave it here, yeah? no problem. <laughs> But didn't you tell me that you felt a little... Uncomfortable. Maybe I was too you too used too to new? the GR. No, yeah. you, because, for example, before the GR, I also used the viewfinder a lot, mm -hmm. shooting the Leica or the Canon. You know? yeah. And uh, when I I was there, I, I went to Rome to test the camera out. Well, not to test the camera. I basically went to Rome for a vacation, mm -hmm. and there was a street photography festival actually. And um, well, uh, I tried to use the Q. Q2 like a GR, and this was mm. really the mistake. Also, I uh, used the viewfinder and everything, but sometimes when you had uh, like a lot of light on the back of your head, um, I used this, the technique to, to dim the light a little mm. bit, like yeah. this, to, to see better the frame on the display. And when I did this, uh, directly... Ah, the sensor of the viewfinder. The sensor of the viewfinder. Yeah, and then I had no image at all, you know. Yeah. Well, you can set it to LCD yeah. only. Yes, but I, I also want to use this. Ah, okay, you know? yeah. So, um, I don't know how easy it is to switch um, LCD yeah. only and... But I remember uh, from going from GR to the M262, the Leica I had, it feels a little weird having this expensive uh, camera and big yeah. camera. It's a, because you're coming from a, this small of a camera, right? Yeah. But uh, now going back to this, I'm used to it now, and this actually feels close to the GR to me. Yeah, but it is kind of bulky. Yeah, know, uh, but, it, you know, but it's a nice camera. Come yeah, on, go on, go on. <laughs> I don't want to say I really love it. Maybe sometimes maybe you want to. It's all about the feeling. Yeah, and, it is. Uh, I mean, it's the little great and touches. And the viewfinder is perfect. No. Mm. And yeah, and manual focusing is yeah. so much fun. You know, I feel so bad always showing new cameras on this channel. It feels like. I'm it's switching. what the people want to see, huh? they want... <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone loves gear, but... Yeah. Um, you know, I wish I could go back to the times where I only shot on my Canon 5D and 35. Yeah. I was happy, I didn't need a different camera. Yeah. And then the GR came and ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a journey and... It is. At yeah. the moment, I feel like I, I can commit to 28. And I can shoot mostly everything. And the other problem I had was uh, really the big files, but uh, this is mm. due to my um, laptop, who yeah. isn't. Uh, By the storage space, it gets cheaper. Yeah, all so the time. Lightroom had to struggle a lot with the big files, but yeah. I mean. You can solve it by a better laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Spend, Spend more, more time. money. Uh, just yeah. for the record, I actually made money selling off my film gear. And my uh, digital. Oh, like, like I said, stuff. you don't have to say anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, uh, other people buy expensive cars or. Yeah, but or, I, or I think sometimes or, you know? I need to say that because people assume that uh, I, I swim in gear and it, it's all just sent to me and 
Uh, but yeah, no. it's all paid no, no, no. by my I, I know him, he's an honorable man. <laughs> <laughs> we start looking into how can I improve my photography without doing the actual work. So I bought some cameras, I sold some cameras, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm done with the Leica hype. Like, okay, I have the Q2 and... So 28, okay, I think we said everything we have to say, right? Yeah. So will, will you commit to 28 for more, a longer time, or are you thinking about experimenting no if i would buy a new camera right mm. away for example um, i also uh, what do you say in english like hmm? ein auge werfen <laughs> ah um, keep an eye on yeah i'm something. keeping an eye on the leica cl2 oh yeah, yeah. and That's i mean you can uh, switch the lens you don't have a fixed lens mm. but it's still small. Like it's still GR small, almost. and but but I guess I would also go for the 18 or 28 millimeter lens. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I got used to 28 millimeters, and but if you um, if you buy a CL, would you still use your GR? Time will tell. <laughs> time I don't know. I, uh, Rico, what are you doing? Ricky, just a uh, Ricky. <laughs> Rico, just bring bring me a GR4 with a little bit bigger. A little bit, come on, like the GR2. It's tiny enough, you can still put the GR2 in your pocket mm. because it's not so fiddly then. And, uh, and weather to the side. And weather That's ceiling. also why I wanted yeah, this, this camera cool now, right. to, to mm. shoot in the rain. Let's end this and look at some of your photo books. All right. And we we'll see you after that. So we are now at his bookshelf. And uh, yeah, show me your books. Well, show, show me what you got. I show you what I got. I have, of course, street photography now. Yep. Like uh, I said, a classic if you want to start with street photography. World Atlas of Street Photography with, uh, I think it's Jesse Marlowe's photo on yeah. the cover. I'm one of the lucky ones who got... Uh, yeah, I've never Hansen. seen this in person. Uh, look. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And then also, kind of a gem I have met. Is this Stuart. the first edition? Yeah, it's the first edition. Oh, I'm number 51. Yeah, which is a really cool book. And I mean, what he did uh, on film also, he changed it. All. Yeah. So, Matt Stewart, for everyone who didn't of course, get the Matt title. Stewart, good, really cool guy. And um, then I have some of the in public photographers, like, or up photographers, like Tabuk Pong, and here then. New book maybe from Melissa mm. Shogunetsi. Can you let's show a few pages? So yeah. this is Melissa Shogunetsi, and this book came out last year, recently. Right? Yeah. Recently. Oh. All New York pictures. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. cool. This is also nice. Yeah. yeah. In contrast to this couple, yeah. classic the Americans. Mm. Yep. Also. David Solomon from the Up Collective. This is a really cool book also. Yeah? yeah. Show me, show me. <laughs> well, just browsing here. No, but keep, it stay at some pages ah, okay. and autofocus can't keep up. <laughs> okay. Any favorites uh, for you, from you? Like what are your favorite pictures? Favorite pictures. Well, I mean, or some you really like? I really like the cover one on the yeah. cover. Wow! Oh, this mm -hmm. is so crazy. Let's let's see this. Yeah, this is uh, really super nice. I really dig Nick Hannes. Show um, some some of yeah, the pictures you wrote to like. nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, or whatever. And wait, there are many cool pictures actually. Like here from the night scenes. I have to check. Yeah, but it has a really nice style because um, I really think he's also not staging. Um, I read in an interview that he uh, looked, um, especially in Dubai, you need permission to photograph, it's not so mm -hmm. easy. Mm. But then uh, things just happen. Uh, he's not arranging, arranging, arranging people or something. Yeah. And yeah, it's perfect eye. I don't know. This is really inspiring. You cannot just enter 
a nightclub or a hotel or a theme park and say, hi, I'm going to make you're, some pictures. You really need these documents. Uh, you, have to, you have to have the ha approval for anything, even sometimes for shooting in the streets. Mm-hmm, I heard that. I wish I didn't hear that, but I just heard that. But also, I have some uh, photos from Iran. Like I said, I'm half Iranian. And this one, for example, you can, it's like the Iranian cover side as well. This is from the revolution, which happened in Iran. And yeah, for me, it's super interesting to see those photos. Mm. Um, Look, from right to left, like the Iranians, mm. like from this side. I don't know when it came out, but I think this edition is kind of new. It looks looks like that. Shirin Neshat, I went to an exposition in Madrid of hers. Inge Morat, which is not Iranian, of course, but which, uh, who went to Iran. Also a nice book. Oh, here are the World Street Photography books. Yes. So this is uh, the book I mentioned earlier where David and I met. Oh, okay, let's see. <laughs> Maybe you're lying. You know what page? It's, it's right at the end. Oh, really? Yeah, almost the, the last pages. Okay, so it should say Samuel and Taro Hopf. There is no Sam. Sam Rogers. Ah, yeah, Shout out. Samuel and Taro Hopf. Where are you? I am here. David Chocobin. Yeah, let's see your picture. I, I honestly I don't remember which okay. one uh, got in from you. First we are going ah, this one. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah. But you got two in the book, right? Four. So this is one from, from David and then four actually? Yeah, yeah, wow. I don't know what happened. Uh, it was the first time I Where's your photo? Is it? <laughs> it was just, you just saw ah, yeah, it. Ah, yeah, 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 okay. this one. Yeah. Mm. I thought it was from Edas Wong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is also cool. Yeah, this is super cool. Yeah. Yeah. This was hanging next to yours, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this one um, was a really, really a surprise to me that it's hanging here next to yours. <laughs> and that was in Vienna? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was uh, really lucky. I, I also tell you that in, this, in the other video, in the mm. old one. But this is uh, what happens. You can... It's all about getting lucky, but you can work mm. for your luck if you go out a lot. Yeah. And also have some of um, our Cologne friend, Wolfgang Zurborn. You remember him, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So he is... Um uh, how do you say, good editor, right? Uh, yeah, he, I think he worked with uh, Alex Webb. Yeah, also, he did and some many uh, very good books. Photographers. And you actually saw him on my channel, right here. Yes. <laughs> dancing? Yeah, yeah probably dancing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's basically it. This was a little introduction to my friend David yeah. Chocobin. Um, yeah, thanks for showing me your your stuff or showing. Thanks my for viewers. coming finally, and uh, hopefully yeah. you come back soon and for another shoot. Uh, definitely, because I wanted to. I actually wanted to do a, a OTSW episode mm. with you because I think it would be a lot of fun. But at the moment, you know, streets are not yeah, as they used to uh, be. Not like it used to be. So we will wait for the, a better opportunity. Um, but we're actually here because we are shooting a video for the Rico Gia channel. Um, and it's probably already on their channel. So check it out if you haven't already. And uh, check out J David's stuff. And uh, we will spend two more days here in Düsseldorf and Cologne. On the way to Cologne. Yeah. yeah, what is crap in English? Crap, is it crap, 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 <laughs> crap, crap, crap. I think this is a good uh, starting point because then we can wait for someone on the left side or right side. Yes. Taking some pictures, maybe. It's raining. Yeah, it's not so yeah. good looking, but... But my camera is weather sealed. And yeah. Yes, it's not. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, we are going to end this here. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video very soon. And because it's raining, we can't really go out to take photos, but...
He has some nice board games, so maybe we should play some games. Hmm, what shall we what shall we choose? Maybe this one here? Nah, it's too too boring. Oh, this is the right one. This is a game I want to play. <laughs> Wait, Samuel. So, huh? First you need some disinfection. What? I don't need it. And I don't need don't this. Don't forget to wear a mask, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah.